Hello everyone, in this video I want to talk about how I redesigned and illustrated this concept for a character I've had for a long time. These are two renderings of the same character. This is basically a ninja and I always wanted to do a realistic depiction of what a ninja might look like, which is farm clothing and earth tones, not really a ninja uniform that anyone would recognize, which kind of defeats the purpose. Now I based myself, especially on the detail of the scarf, on the Togakuri clan, which is one of the first ninja clans, and uh, they used to have the scarf wrapping around the top of the uh, the hat, but I didn't really feel that, so I just added it as a car scarf around the neck, and I can have it wave in the wind, and it, it, it might look cool. Now the purpose of this is that I want to illustrate the character um, and then I want to animate it using um, Dragon Bones uh, free, uh, 2D animation software. Now, at this point, I think I've nailed the pose of the legs. I want a really extreme pose uh, because I've steered away from the realism in the sense that I've created a colorful uniform on the on the bottom right. There, you can see a purple a purple shirt with red accents, and that's what I'm uh, thinking of illustrating. But now I'm really looking for the pose. And I'm changing the pose depending on how I want the silhouette to look because I want the silhouette to be interesting. I'm thinking of doing like an X, but depending on the way that I twist the torso, which is what I'm trying here, I can get different angles and I can get different silhouettes. Now, I really like the, the, the one on the left, the second line. And here I take the idea of twisting the torso a little bit more. And I put the character in this sort of defensive position in which he's giving the shoulder to the enemy but he's coiled up, ready to open up, and as he opens up, he can slash and, and do damage. Now, what I do here is I redraw that main sketch, that early sketch, and some other artists prefer to actually work on silhouettes first, and then they add in the detail, but because I quite like drawing um, details as I go, I don't even uh, do that. I just straight go into, into drawing the lines and the different elements of the, of the character. I'm trying to give an angle to the swords by tilting the hands. As I rotate the hands and add details of the hands, I can kind of see the angles of the uh, the angle of the sword and the angle of the the hands themselves. One of the things that also changed was the type of hat. Uh, I made these more rounded off hat, which I find more interesting. Now I've set my light source to be from the right because that allows me to separate the front and back legs. So the back leg is a little darker and the one on the right is the near leg, so to speak, and that gets a little bit more of, of direct sunlight. The point of having this light is that I can draw the attention away from the crossing of the arms into the hands, because I can make the hand, because of the angle of the hand, I can make the hand a little bit brighter, and I can make the, uh, the forearm, uh, I can keep it in the dark. That way, the attention from that spot is reduced. Now, I find a color from some of my sketches to shade the blades with, and I'm trying to add a little bit of bounce light from the scene onto the leg there, but it's something you want to avoid not doing too much because adding those colors in a situation where there's no direct light can actually cause your object to look flat because it's going to look multifaceted rather than being smooth. The other issue here is, as well, I want these uh, shin guards to look like metal, so I have to reflect something off of it, off of, off of those surfaces, and I just reflect the background color. I just assume the metal color is close to the same as I'm using on the blades. Although the blades are a little bit bright, I'm going to darken them a little bit because being metal, you don't want the blades to be too bright overall because uh, only certain spots of the blade are going to reflect back. So I think I'm making, yeah, there we go. I make it a little bit darker so that the highlight really pops. And uh, with that, um, it tends to look a bit more metalish. Um, now I'm adding details here on the shoulders for the sole purpose of just populating that area with more visual interest. And um, also adding that bounce light from the shirt onto the scarf as a way to make those two interact. And by doing that, you can kind of get the illusion that they are in the same realm, so they, they're sharing the same realm. Now for the face here, I try and bring some of the shades from the surroundings and uh, bouncing them on the face. I also redraw the face um, on the drawing because I think I need some orientation of the perspective of the elements. There's obviously shadow, which would be more like ambient occlusion on the face. 
and I'm trying to get some shades to bounce off of the face and I'm trying not to go too overboard with the saturation but I do want to have some reflections off of it probably a fighting situation you would have a little bit of sweat so the skin gets a bit more reflective and I can kind of get away with that by adding these highlights to, to sort of sculpt away the, the shapes of the face onto the drawing. Now for being such a dark um, area around the eyes I really don't need to have any lines around the eyes I can just draw a little bit of the white and that gives me the duration of the pupil in the eye so that's kind of something that um, helps uh, solve the issue of having to really draw the eyes. In this area here because the the pixel art version that I did the head looks really stiff I just rounded that off with a little bit more light um, with a bit smoother so on, on the brush paint and this is the final result which I will then animate using something like this more like a puppet warp so yeah thanks for watching and hope to see you guys again